Now. Now? Talking yeah. about it now? Yeah, now we're recording. Now we're recording. I speak with eloquent diction. <laughs> the good marriage is not a wide release feature. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about Drew's match uh, today that just dropped a few hours ago uh, with uh, her match against Downtown Griffey Nooms. Yeah, Nooms. Uh, by the way, hi. Hi, hi. everybody. I'm Hello. Video Drew. I'm Eric, Narconic. Narconic. Yeah. I guess I'm just Drew. I yeah. guess we've really sort of uh, broken the fourth wall on that, so to speak. Yeah. I'm just Drew, but then sometimes I'm Video Drew. And today I was Video Drew uh, in a match that was... That was as exciting as it was a bummer for me at the end, ultimately. <laughs> um, it was, uh, I was really looking forward to this match, actually. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to win it, but I didn't also think it was going to be this close. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for a while, like, I think earlier in the year, you told me like you would love to play uh, mm-hmm. Griffin Newman. It's Griffin Newman, Paul Walter Hauser, anyone else that's famous. <laughs> but especially Paul Walker, Walter Hauser, because I really thought we could have a good Cruella like, side angle going on where if like... I won. He would have to come work for me in kidnap doggies. Yeah. <laughs> but Griffin's okay yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, but no, like when we were uh, getting ready for the match, like you, uh, you know, a couple days before, when you kind of found out like the scheduling of everything, mm-hmm. uh, you were prepping for it. Like yeah, I think you kind of went into this with the idea, like yes, like Griffin's on fire right now. He's like really hot new rookie. Um, everyone's hyping up. Like he's gonna be like you know in the top class of like rookie of the year, like for the, mm-hmm. the nominations. So it, you know it's it's like a it's a big uphill battle to kind of like jump into, but. Um, I think it's correct in saying, you know, what people have been building for you, which is that you've been doing really well this year. Yeah. Um, and every performance that you've had, like you have shown like, you know, chisels of improvement in like certain areas. Like, again, this is your second consecutive perfect round one, your third overall, correct? Yeah, I've only missed one. Oh, no, I've missed two if you count the hard free for all. But yeah, if we if we drop out the uh, match with Dewberry, which is one I won, yeah. I've had three perfect round one just kind of going bam 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 since yeah. la- the end of last season and then yeah the uh, one for the horror free-for-all i still don't count as like <laughs> so i still count that as a perfect round well one it's exhibition does so technically doesn't count it's not canon i mean i just think i could have gotten that we we knew that i knew the answer <laughs> um yeah so i think like you know round ones have been my i've been kind of just swishing through them like nothing but net that started out on like the hardest question i think probably of the game or no i mean there are some Stephen king ones that were crazy but that that sam neil one i was I had sort of made a bet or like I'd hedged my bets and sort of assumed that he was going to be bad at horror. Yeah. Because we hadn't seen, I've like listened to Blank Check before. I'm actually a big fan of his. I think he talks really well and sort of critically about, uh, about movies in a way that's like a little bit more in depth than just like surface stuff. I've heard him on, uh, how did this get made talking about the Snyder cut? And like, yes. it was the only time I've ever been able to listen to a dude talk about the Snyder cut without mm-hmm. wanting to like tear my ears and off. <laughs> uh, so I know that he's a really deep thinker. I know he has a wide breadth of knowledge, but I was surprised when he pulled Sam Neill and I was like, uh Oh, like, maybe he knows horror a little bit better. And then his five pointer, well, not the toughest question in the world. Um, and we can get into that. I think proved that he actually like has a, at least passing knowledge of horror stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll get into all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we'll just take it from starting with round one, which, like mm-hmm. you said, kind of kicked off really strong with the Sam Neill question. Oof. And, uh, you know, I think it's no secret. It's, you know, like the writers are starting to try and like, kind of push you guys a little harder yeah. for, for tournament season. Like, you know, like everyone's made it this far with a win or something under the belt, like to show for it. And so I think they're really trying to push that, you know, you had to earn your spot, like making your way through this. And uh, I think you definitely did. Like you definitely push yourself in this match. Like you only missed one question, you know, technically yeah. overall on paper. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, it's not like you, you know, were totally shaken, you know, and thrown around by the questions, like especially in round one, mm-hmm. but in round one, uh, coming off of the Sam Neill question going into like the subsequent subsequent ones mm-hmm. um like what were you kind of thinking I guess like maybe like halfway through like my question like three four five you know like how are you like feeling about it I was like pretty once I got that Sam Neill one and yet he got it too I was kind of like okay so I kind of made a thing in my head I was like so we're both getting perfect round ones I was like that's gonna be a given like there's no way he's missing after that Sam Neill one if he's gonna miss on anything like I don't think he will and like maybe I'll miss on something but like the questions got like like significantly easier after that first one, like uh like the Anne Hathaway one, the Natalie Portman one, uh the Bill and Ted one. Geez, like you know, like those are the only problem with the Bill and Ted one was I almost went to their the characters' name or the actors' names. Yeah, but then I was like remembered how the question was phrased. You gotta be really quick, careful about how they phrase the questions. I could have gotten two or three more 
correct questions in this game if I or not gone to multiple if I had listened closer to the way that it was phrased. Yeah, it goes to like some of the, the context clues. The context clues are really kind of going to help you out, I think, in this in this season of the Schmodown. Yeah. Um, the year question, the bonus question, which is where he stumbled and I was able to pick it up. He was only wrong by a year. Uh, in my studying of Griffin, it does seem like his weak spot might be movie release dates, and that might help someone like you know my faction mate Ben Bateman. That's not going to help me very much because yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm not super great at movie release dates. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really a toss up. I mean, movie release dates can be literally any movie that's ever existed, so it's actually the broadest category that exists. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I I knew it because I knew Stand by Me. I wasn't sure about the other ones, but I knew Stand by Me. It's the one where you want to see dead body yeah and um, and uh do, how, how do, do you is there a reason why you knew that one specifically because it's the one where it's like how do you, you how do you see a dead body who do you want to see a dead body i mean it's it's rob reiner's uh it's one of the two i think rob reiner stephen king books see i know stephen king uh adaptations he did uh stand by me and he did misery there might be another one in there but like those two are very very strong uh, movies. Um, I put Highlander around that time. I always figure it's not like the year that I was born, but I usually do it in the in the way that I know that David Lynch did a movie a certain year, and then I, if I know that other movies have been done the same year, I'll just go, oh, in my head I'll go, oh, it's uh, the same year that Lynch did a film. So I knew it was the same year. I knew Highlander and Stand by Me were the same year that Lynch did a film. And the question was whether it was 1984 or 1986. And I felt like 1984, which is the year I was born, I would have remembered if like Stand By Me had come out the year I was born. Yeah. So like I was like, let's just go two up and go from Dune to Blue Velvet. So we made that little swap in my head and it was like 1986. Oh, so that's good. Good deductive reasoning there. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you, if you know what years <laughs> David Lynch came out with the film. Yeah. That will help you out. But that's how you do it, right? You kind of base it, base it around your core knowledge of stuff that you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's also, I've never seen Stand By Me, but I remember Kiefer Sutherland's in it, but he's young. River Phoenix is in it, but he's young. Like Dreyfus is in it. Uh, I like know who's in it kind of. So I'm able to, like Jerry O'Connell was like a baby. Highlander, I kind of triage, and I, I forget the third one. I still forget the third one, the third movie. In, um, uh, in the bonus question, mm-hmm. it was Stand By Me, Highlander, and Three Amigos. Three Amigos. That one I should have just known from Three Amigos because we just did a Three Amigos quiz, but like yeah. I couldn't. I think that was like the question, or like we had that issue in when we did our video chronic quiz because it was like, oh, are you asking for the year the movie was released? Yeah. Or the year the movie takes place in? Yeah. And it I was, didn't it, know either. It did not take place in 1916. It doesn't take place. <laughs> it wasn't shot in 1916. And it yeah. doesn't take place in 1986. Uh, so I was kind of able to triage information off of literally the most abstract concept in the world, which is like what David Lynch was doing during that time. But, you know, if you got a, if you got a strength like that, you pull it. And uh, it really goes to the fact that so many of these questions are subjective. Like things seem easy. Like I thought his round two was so easy. And my round two was so hard. Like it yeah. was clear that he couldn't get my pickup. So, yeah. like, that means that my questions were, like, by definition, harder. Yeah. I well, think. I mean, again, it, it falls in line with, like, what is preferable to you, right? Because I, 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 I've talked about this, and I think, like, most times when people say, like, oh, those questions were easier, I think it's just, like, it's just the look at the draw that those questions happen to be easier to mm-hmm. you. And, mm-hmm. like, if you had had those, yes, you would have definitely ran the board with those. Like, you definitely would have known, like... Cape Blanchett, like Blanchett, Rolling Stone, Rolling Stones. Uh, uh, you might have, you might have gotten a shot at the uh, government agency. I would have gotten a multiple like he did, but I think I would have gotten it because the other ones didn't make sense. And then the the one from Eternal Sunshine. Again, you're right. You're right. So like that question that he got about Eternal Sunshine to a lot of people might be hard because yeah. Kristen Dunst is involved with two people in that movie. It's Mark Ruffalo and Tom Wilkinson. Yeah, he obviously earned his his correct answer because he didn't just give you the name of uh tom wilkinson he also said the name of the actual doctor yeah. which is like a little bit harder yeah. to, to pull <laughs> yeah. i don't even know if i know the name of the doctor <laughs> but he pulled it so he obviously like deserved those correct answers i'm just saying you know yeah well i guess yeah. we'll go through your round two questions which yeah, is like yeah, yeah. stephen king i mean for you spun away from pixar which people are surprised about. Yeah, I mean, they say maybe you should stuck with it, but I mean, it's just strategy. Like he, he is a known Pixar like He's guy. He's a Pixar he, dude. He even he even said in his match against Jacoby in his post interview that like animated was a strength of his. So yeah, like when like that was taken off the wheel, he wasn't sure what he was gonna do. Yeah. So it's like you know, it's usually the general rule of thumb is you shouldn't stick with like the strength of your opponent if you spin it. If you if you can spin away from it, like don't stick with it. Yeah, and be honest, like Pixar is fine. I'm fine with Pixar, but like. 
if he's an expert in it, I mean, think about how much worse that could have gone if, yeah. like, it's Pixar and I'm just blindly guessing yeah. answers. I mean, when I checked down to multiple of my rounds, like, I, I kind of was able to pick up most of those answers. Yeah. Um, and knowingly, like, I knew some of them without the pickup. I just couldn't get them at the second. Yeah. Um, but, in, like, in, yeah. in, my, in my opinion, Pixar has been getting more difficult because they get been getting more contextual. But also, there have been more films within the last, like, two or three years that have just been, like, really, like, you know, piling on. Like, before Pixar would release a movie, like, what, every, like, two, yeah, three like, years? Who wants a hugely deep-cut Luca question? Like, yeah. I've seen Luca, but, like, I don't want that question <laughs> in my life right now. I don't want to be, like, what's the name of the freaking, you know, sheep, <laughs> you know, fish herder or like anything like that i knew a vespa i knew like you yeah. know spaghetti in italy and pesto but i didn't really know i knew maya rudolph but i didn't really remember even the name i think of the two main kids i know something jack dylan brian grazer yeah anyway yeah yeah three out of yeah, two thirds two, of the two way out of three yeah and then you know the the main one yeah it's jacob Tremblay. yeah, yeah. okay i would have gotten that but i couldn't hold you who couldn't uh composed it yeah yeah, so it it was it, it was a educated uh, maneuver to spin away from that, and then plus there was a lot yeah. on the board that I really liked. Yeah. I mean, I I'm still gonna like defend my going with King. I really like Stephen King. It's unfortunate, like those were the questions because I think it doesn't really showcase how much yeah. I love the work of Stephen King. Yeah, um, and it's like we and on another day, like you might have gotten those because of just like again, like if you had just like taken a beat to like think about the questions a little mm-hmm. more and like kind of work your way around them, but also if like the information was there from previous studying and like just uh, happenstance circumstances to get yourself the information which was starting with the dreamcatcher one. Oh my god like, we had watched dreamcatcher like I, oh yeah i showed you dreamcatcher like four or five months ago and- yes i could have told you anything else about dreamcatcher anything else tom sizemore morgan freeman hello jones yeah. like damian lewis <laughs> timothy yeah. oliphant we just totally overlooked that lawrence kazan had written directed it yes and here's the thing I have just found out, and I'm saying like in the last month or two, I have found out that George Lucas did not write and direct those three first Star Wars films. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I believed that George Lucas was the entire writer, creator, founder of the Star Wars trilogy, the original trilogy. And finding out there's a new guy and his... I think I've gotten that wrong on a free-for-all question once. Yeah? Yeah. I think I've gotten that wrong on a free-for-all. Um, is Or someone else's free-for-all. Lawrence Kasdan... Not a name I was aware of. So I just became aware of that name. If we did point out that he was the writer-director uh, of the film, it wouldn't have meant anything to me. Yeah. I, don't, I didn't know who he was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was... Uh, uh, Lawrence Kasdan was the writer-director of Dreamcatcher. And so I, I think maybe I had mentioned that, like, passingly. But, like, again, like, you at that time didn't really know, like, what that meant. No idea. Yeah. That would have been, been like, oh, huh. But as soon as they said in the multiple choice, again, this is why you have to pay attention. As soon as they said writer, direct, because they, they started out by saying co-writer and director of Dreamcatcher. And that like really put me in a tizzy because I was like, I have to know the co-writers of movies now? Like, yeah, if they just said the director, fine. But the thing is, I wouldn't have gotten the correct uh, answer on the pickup if they had just said director, because why would it be important that it, he's the co-writer unless it's Lawrence Kasdan? Yeah, and you, and the other options were, uh, you know, it was A, Lawrence Kazan, B, George A. Romero, C, Frank Darabont, and D, David Kep. And now, so, yeah, Darabont famously has only done the movies of his that he did of Stephen King. That's yeah. that's The Green Mile, and that's uh, Shawshank. Yeah, right. Those are the two Darabont movies. Yeah. Um, the I didn't know the David Kemp. I didn't know who he is. Uh, I still don't know who he is. I know he did Serve Echoes. Yeah, now he did Serve Echoes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know he did do one Stephen King movie, but it just didn't sound right. Um, and then the. Romero absolutely did not do Jim yeah. Catcher. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be crazy. I'd like to see that movie. Like yeah, I mean, as I was listening to it, like, I kind of, like, thought to myself, like, it has to be A or D because, like, oh, I, I, know. We, no, I didn't know because I, I just couldn't remember. And, like, I remember, or I remember thinking to myself as I was listening to the match, like, it definitely has to be A or D because, like, there's no way we would have watched it and, like, not have made a note that George A. Romero or, like, Frank Darabont did, the, did this. I know it wasn't Darabont. I just know that. Yeah. Um, I, uh, Knew it wasn't Romero. I knew that. When they said co-writer, director, it clicked. Like, why would it be important that this guy, David Kemp, like, co-wrote? He would just be like, who directed Dreamcatcher? Like, why even mention the writing part? Like, that's a thing that's there to give you, as the person, like, a a little help. Yes. Um, And then, so you were able to get that point. Uh, And then question two was, um, Peter Askin directed what 2014 film based on a Stephen King novella that starred Joan Allen and Anthony LaPaglia? So there's a lot to unpack in this question. Okay. So real quick, A Good Marriage is a Stephen King novella. Uh, I could have listened closer when they gave me the multiple and thought, which is the one that is the novella out of all those movies? Yeah. 
But here's the thing. There was no movie that was released in, like, wide release in theaters called A Good Marriage. Uh, it just didn't happen. That movie came out on VOD uh, the same day it came out in limited release theaters. It came out to such a limited release that there's no box office for it. Like, it might, it might have come out in, like, three or four regional theaters. But this was a movie that, for all intents and purposes, is, like, a Gerald's game. Or, like, when Stephen King redid The Shining and did it on TV. I mean, there's... About a million examples of Stephen King uh, miniseries or Stephen King made-for-TV movies that we don't count in the Stephen King category. I don't think. Maybe we do. Like, maybe we would count, you know, a Stephen King, you know, Rose Matador or something. Or uh, we would count, you know, the Stan miniseries now <laughs> as a movie. Or, you know, there's a, there's a ton of these. Rose Red, I think, is one. Um, there's just a ton of Stephen King made-for-TV movies. And I don't think that those count as as official things. I don't even think Gerald's Game, which is done by Mike Flanagan on Netflix, but was done, you know, only for Netflix, counts as a as a movie that is on this, you know, on the spectrum. Maybe yeah. maybe I needed a clarification on that, but like I didn't think that that was the case. I thought movies were only allowed to be used uh for movies that come out on like, you know, streaming or VOD were only allowed to be used in the case of going 2020 forward because yeah. um or if they had like a even then, if they had were released, that they had to have a wide release. Oh, shit, oh, that's sorry. Drew's phone going off. For I don't know why. Uh, people not saying just wide hello. release, but like if it was a festival film, like something that did really good in the festival circuit, like maybe I could see because they can cross over with festival darlings. But like, my goodness, like this movie was. We try to look it up afterwards. There's one YouTube review of this film. <laughs> yeah, there's like one or two YouTube reviewers, like just like you know, random people reviewing it. Uh, there, it, it is very difficult to find its box office like revenue. It doesn't exist. Yeah, um, and so it, it it seemed like it came out like in like yeah like a handful of small theaters yeah. uh, with like uh, alongside a VOD release. Simultaneous, and that's where I get tripped up because it's a simultaneous VOD and mainstream release. Now, did I know about its VOD release? Did I know this movie existed? Like, no. Um, and that's why I kind of went with Hearts in Atlanta. So once again, though, Anthony Lillipaglia. Uh, <laughs> There was. It's because of this curse I have, where I we were watching Empire Records one day, me and Nerd Chronic, and Nerd Chronic goes, "Who's the guy playing the boss?" And I go, "Oh, he'll never matter. Like he's never gonna come up. He was in nothing else." And we looked him up. He was in Annabelle Creation. Yeah. Didn't see this movie, but definitely noticed him on Annabelle Creation. And then that's the question I got wrong with his name as the context clue in yeah. the horror free for all. <laughs> and once again, he has screwed me because I thought they were saying Frank Langella <laughs> both times. Both times when I asked, I didn't ask for repeat, but I went to multiple. Um. I thought they were saying Frank Langella. Frank Langella, not Anthony LaPaglia. Yeah, or no, that is the one where... No, I didn't go to um, repeat then. But yeah, I thought Frank Langella... I thought Frank Langella would have played well against... I've never seen the Hearts in Atlantis movie, but I thought maybe Joan Allen is the kid's mother. Maybe Frank Langella is playing against uh, uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins in that movie. That yeah. would have made sense. Yeah, that would have made sense, yes. Uh, but you missed that one, and then uh, Griffin did not get the steal. Well, because Griffin also guessed In the Tall Grass, which is another straight-to-streaming movie. That's mm -hmm. a Patrick Wilson one, and, like, couldn't... Uh, in my mind, I was like, it couldn't be that, because that went straight-to-streaming. Maybe I just need to clarify with PJ and the writers, like, what counts in certain categories. Because if things count before 2020 uh, for streaming, kind of changes the game. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then question three, and Stephen King was... Uh, uh, oops, sorry, not that. Next one. What punk rock band wrote a single for 1989's Pet Cemetery, simply titled Pet Cemetery, that played over the film's end credits? Okay, so this one, I'm gonna get like some flack for and saying that this, like, I should have gotten this. I definitely have. I know about this song's existence. I definitely have heard it before. I know that Adam Witt once showed me a shirt of him, like with the Ramon shirt in Pet Cemetery. So when I heard the multiple choices, I was able to get it pretty quickly. But gosh, again, this seems like, again, like pretty hard because it's extre it's extraneous information. We're not talking about anything, like, let's say for the sake of purposes, like diegetic in the film. Yeah. We're not asking about like a director. We're not asking about who scored the film. We're asking about who had a song that played over the end credits. Yeah. And it's movie. like, you know, and I, I get it. Like, you know, it's related to the movie. Like, sure. But it's uh, it feels like this is like the information it's asking for what the amount of information it's giving you is asking like a music trivia question not like a yeah. movie trivia question and that feels a little bit 
Yeah, that, unfair. You know, I mean, yeah, it's, it's fair, is, but it's, yeah, it's this is just, it's just. Uh, I mean, I kind of feel the same way. This is just a personal preference. Like, I just you know, I'm not like a big music person. Like, I like music, like of course, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I definitely don't know music trivia. I don't know. I can't tell you like the band names of like uh, band member names, like certain things. Like, I can't even tell you the band member names, like my favorite bands. Like, you know, it's just not right. information I hold in my head. Right. It's not even asking like what song played over the end credits. It's like who sang it, and yeah. it's like that seems. I don't. I can't think of another example where you're being asked to name. Who did like the radio edit of a song, which is essentially what this is. Like, you know, if they'd ask me, if you're in Disney and you're being asked who sang the radio version of Beauty and the Beast, like, do you think that's a fair question? Like the, the one that plays over the end credits of Beauty and the Beast? Yeah. The original? Yeah. Because like Disney does that all the time, right? They have yeah, a, Disney does they have, that they have all a pop, the time. They have a pop singer sing like the famous song at the end credits. Yeah. And they'll do it over the end credits. So it's like, yeah. or who sang Let It Go? And yeah. They, it's so close. Yeah. That's our doggy. Um, that's our doggy. She's trying to play with the other doggies. Together. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're being yeah, asked, like, like, like who's like, saying, like, who sang, like, like uh, or, or who's, yeah, who's saying Let It Go in the, like, end credits of Frozen, who's saying uh, How Far I'll Go at the end credits of Moana. Do you think, I mean, do you, I guess the question is, do you think that's fair game? Yeah, I mean. Because, like, do you think end credits count as, like, part of the movie if they didn't, not something that has a stinger I mean, yeah, end? and I'll, and I'll say this, like, look, and we, we saw PJ later, like, that day. PJ after, knows a, I feel a, this after, after, after you, like, you filmed this. And so, like, we had dinner and, like, everything's, like, fine. So, like, I love PJ. I, yeah, I and no PJ problem. knows, like, I'll, I have his back as a production guy. Like, I have his back one. 100%. I'm not but, one of these people complaining. Yeah, but I don't even know if this was like a, a directly like him question. Like, you know, like the, PJ is not like, you know, like he has a team that helps him. So like, you know, I, I can't even lay anything 100% on him mm-hmm. for these things. But I'm just saying that the fact that they asked like this question for this, like, uh, you know, like a punk rock band singing like a, like, you know, like a rock song for like, you know, like a horror film. It feels like, you know, in like a kind of like a dude adjacent like angle for like a question. Which is yeah. like, you know, like this is like something like you know, like, like like a lot of guys would know because like you probably they probably grew up in an era listening to their remotes and knew this song. Yeah, I mean, look, I've I've definitely heard. I don't think it's a gendered thing as much as like a. a, a I know the remotes pretty well. I know that song Pet Cemetery. I just don't know music that well, so like I knew the song Pet Cemetery, but like from an all female cello band cover of it, <laughs> you know. And I knew, uh, you know, I knew the Ramones. I knew Pet Cemetery. I know the movie pretty well. It just doesn't feel like a lot of these questions, besides the last one, which, again, that was my mess up. Because by this point in the game, I'm getting really, like, bent out of shape. Like, I'm really getting, like, turned. Like, you can see it on my face. Like, I'm just, like, freaking out. Because I'm like, what are these questions? It's like, it's like suddenly everyone's speaking in Spanish or something. Like, I know Stephen King. I didn't put Stephen King on the wheel, but if I, like, if I had gone with a third choice, it would have been King. And it felt like these were just entirely questions that were made to, like to have nothing to do with the contextual information of the films and everything to do with like the extemporaneous information about the films, about films that aren't that well known or haven't been released, uh, possibly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and that's how it goes sometimes. Which that's really how it sucks. goes. Yeah. That's what, the, that's the, that is the strategy and the, the risk you run taking a narrow, narrow slice yeah. is because that's, that's the issue. Is and, like, and, and King's been spun a couple times so far. So like, we're not like, you know, it's not like these questions are like right out the gate. You know, being hard. Like, it, it has progressed this way to this yeah. point. Yeah. And look, when it, that's the thing. I mean, I found out from my Dewberry match going with 90s. Like, it is, the questions get harder or, like, less, you know, broad <laughs> the more you get niche. And so if you've spin King, which is one of PJ's favorite, like, per- people, then you best be ready to, like, come to play. I just, you know, and I, I could have answered a lot of questions about a lot of Stephen King movies. I got the, the one about what year Stand By Me came out, but I didn't. I wasn't able to pull uh, any of these. And the annoying thing is about uh, the fourth question is I definitely like know that answer. I know that answer. I mean, we've gone over that, but also I just know who Clancy Brown is. Like I know his name. Yeah, I, mean, I know was, who he is. That was a name you were pulling pretty quickly uh, through studying uh, for Promising a Woman. Like who plays the father in Promising a Woman? Oh, Promising yeah. a Woman. When we were watching Invincible, we looked up who played the uh, demon, and it was like Clancy Brown. Like yeah. I like Pr- Clancy Brown a lot. I was just watching a movie with Lawn that had Clancy Brown in it. Like I like his name. Not only just I like Clancy Brown, I like the name Clancy Brown. Like what a fun <laughs> name. When we were doing the Rotten Tomato script about best Shawshank Redemption facts, I had like a whole Clancy Brown segment. So yeah. like it's not like I didn't know he was in the movie or who he played in the movie. Yes. But, uh Yeah, and so that, that kind of ended your round, and then uh, Griffin gets into his second round, uh, which he spends two thousands. He sticks with it. Oh my god. Uh, which you know, is is a fair play. Like I think if you had spun two thousands, you probably would have stuck with it. I think. Oh boy, do I wish I'd stuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, cause his question is like, and this goes into what we were saying earlier. It's just like this, these are the questions that you kind of, you do feel like, unfortunately, like they would have been yours that day if you had spun it. Well, the, dif- right. the, the difficulty differential, again, this is no writer's fault. I'm not blaming the writers. Cause again, this goes into the strategy of how you pick wheel slices. The difficulty in naming, like some of the questions were hard if you were not me. Yeah. Like, you yeah, know, exactly. Let's see, that's what I mean. the, the, the eternal sunshine one would have been hard. I think, I think, uh, it might've even been hard to pull Kate Blanchett. It's one of the more famous uncredited cameos, but I didn't know we were doing uncredited cameos. Yeah. Like they didn't even say it's uncredited, but she isn't credited in the film as being the girlfriend. She's just masked. And like, it's just a fun piece of trivia that a lot of people know, uh, is that Kate Blanchett voiced like the woman behind the mask. So Griffin knew it. And like, and again, all fairness to him, he knew it. And then he knew extraneous information about it, which was like the name of the doctor from Eternal Sunshine. Yeah. And all this stuff. So he was, I think he was flexing a little bit to be like, I understand that these questions are significantly like different and (laughs) easier than like the one that I couldn't get even a pickup seal on. Yeah. So like the the one about Rolling Stone. I mean, what else could it have been? I guess it could have been technically a cream. Yeah. Those are the things like, so I think, you know, Again, these questions would have been easy for you and for maybe some of the people in, in the Shabbat community. But the questions are layered, I think, at least with an attempt to like, kind of be a little like tricky. Like so like the again, like you said, the Tom Wilkinson question, like that was layered to have like potentially you might think it's Mark Ruffalo if you're not thinking about it like totally clearly. Um, the And then the uh, Rolling Stone one is layered to think like the thing is when you ask the magazine, the magazine that he initially like, goes and meets Stillwater for, he's writing for a cream. But yeah. when he goes to actually interview them, like officially, it's for Rolling Stone. Okay. So if you are thinking about it too quickly, you might say cream. That's, that's, that might trip might trip someone up. I guess you'd have to know almost famous pretty well, but not that well. Because yeah. I think if you're just hearing the word music magazine, your first guess, if you're just taking a shot in the dark, Rolling Stone's like the music magazine. Yeah. So I think you would, and I think there's like big parts of the movie where he's like, I'm right for Rolling Stone. I think that's in the trailer. Yeah. So you would have to know the movie pretty well to get tripped up by it by thinking cream. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that might be, yeah. The uh, moment where knowing the film like really well might bite you if you, th- you think about it too fast because like you, again, like he meets uh, Stillwater by going, by meeting them at a concert, by uh, coming off of like a assignment for cream. I think it would have been like really good if they'd asked the name of the band. Like if they asked yeah. for Stillwater. Stillwater. That might have been like a harder question. Yeah. I feel like Rolling Stone's a pretty easy question. The the Xander question that was the toughie. Yeah, I do I do appreciate that. Uh, uh, so what was the second question? The second question was uh, who plays. So I appreciate that two of them were casting questions, and casting then questions, and, and then the yeah. other two, and the other two were contextual questions. Yes, they, he didn't get any of the who co wrote, who directed, who did the music. Yeah, it was all. It was entirely the thing was uh, who who stuff you could have gleaned from being able to see the movie yes and uh so the, the last one yeah being rolling stone i, I do i do i like at least that the questions were contextual yeah it's the, not something you yeah. find out through studying imdb like, yeah. necessarily <laughs> yeah you probably could it might be in the uh wikipedia but even so like i still i appreciate that stunt just uh, who played or what is you know mm-hmm. um and then get to round three uh which uh so you're behind three points so it's not like so it's not a huge deficit you know like come back like yeah, i'm just bummed by I this know. point i think you can watch my face and like it's just clear because i usually round three is where i choke and like i've been famously choking on my round threes uh since god since the mark riley match i think that's where it started getting a reputation for choking on the three yeah uh third round i mean yeah because that's when i couldn't pull the two three or five right yeah and then but then you did well you hit you at least your two and your three against dewberry yeah and i hit my ones against Jen it's just more like uh then when I played Marisol I missed my two and my three yeah and then uh so getting into round three yeah three point deficit so you had to hit your two and your three just to catch up and uh, make Griffin answer his and the first question you got was in the category of Oscars and it said uh uh what best picture uh, winning film follows a CIA agent who has used a fake movie production as a cover to rescue six American hostages in Iran? I, it's really funny watching my face in this match. Like my face is not doing like the normal video drew like smile. It's not doing like the video drew scowl. It's like literally looking so bummed. Yeah. Like I'm just checked out because I'm like, I hear that I'm getting Oscars and I'm like, okay, fuck it. Like I'm done. I'm done. Like it's toast. Good job, Drew. You got that perfect round one again. Yeah. But now like this is all people are going to remember. And then I heard the question. And I was like, oh. Yes. Fucking Ario. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a good okay. thing. Yeah, I mean, the two point 
question is, you know, it's like by, by design, like, so it's a little easier. So luckily, Yeah, but I've missed these a lot. Yeah, but luckily that was like your two-point question in Oscars as opposed to a five-point question in Oscars, you know? Yeah, and like, it wasn't like who won an Oscar, which I might not have gotten. Like, yeah. if it was like, what year did Argo win? Or like, like, who was nominated for Argo? Like, I mean, it was Brian Cranston, right? Was it nominated, was right? That, was that Brian Cranston? I thought that was Trumbo. He wasn't he also nominated for Argo? Oh my gosh, let's guys, let's look that up. See, this is exactly <laughs> I, it. I thought it was Alan Arkin. Oh, maybe it was Arkin. Uh, but he's also in it. Cranston's in it. Is he? Yeah, okay. Brian Cranston's I, in it. That movie did not uh, hit me, I think, the way <laughs> that it should have. I mean, I could have probably told you what year Cowed Out. I think it came out in 2014 or 15. I believe 14. Yeah, I think 14 sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, so I could have answered a couple things about Argo. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, so I knew that one. Very, then, like, very happy about yeah, that. Yeah, so you got that. And then the next question was a three-point question, which is black cinema. Oh, God. So that's one. Again, my face is just going. Yeah. I think they're like, so are you ready for the question? I just don't answer. You're just like, uh-huh. Yeah. I don't even say uh-huh. Yeah, I just then, don't answer. Because uh, I'm which, not. Yeah, which singer stars as Savannah Jackson, a successful television producer in the 1995 romance film Waiting to Exhale? Um, good thing I had listened to the question a little harder. Because when I've asked this question to other people and without giving the name of Savannah, people have guessed that it's a dude. Yeah. People have guessed a dude, like a dude singer. I heard Savannah, so I knew it was a chick. I understood that Angela Bassett is not a singer. Um, so it was really between, around that period of time, Whitney Houston was really big. Tina Turner had also done a couple of movies, but I couldn't pull Tina Turner's name because I was just losing my mind at this point. I guess also Tina Turner doesn't seem like the right type for that movie. So it really just was one name in my head. It was Whitney. It was a total guess. But like it was the only thing that was coming to mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, luckily that was right. That's what you needed mm -hmm. to. Uh, I mean, that's just these are two categories, though, that I wouldn't say are like my favorite things in the entire world. Yeah. To take the lead on that. And so that would uh, put Griffin and Newman. Griffin and Newman. Griffin Newman in a position to have to answer his two and his three to tie you. Close encounters of a Griffin Newman. Or to beat you, to get the lead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Close encounters of a Griffin Newman. Um, and so he had to go into his two point question, which was. Was it something that was hard? One what, of his was maybe hard. Uh, who directed the British crime film Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels? No, never mind. Neither of his was hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, Guy Ritchie. Yeah, it's That's Guy Ritchie. Him. Uh, and yeah, again, two point question. You know, designed to be. Yeah, but I've had to the two. Point, what was my two point question in the Marisol one? Oh, it was the uh, it was the everything is is the Lego movie one. No, okay, it was, uh, I could have done twenty one Jump Street. It was like, oh yeah, it was by the who. Jump twenty one Jump Street. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which you just didn't know, which just you know lapse in. Yeah, and, and the one I've gotten before is I think also what James Bond actor played the guy in Tomb Raider, which again is like harder. Yeah. I think so. It's it just goes match by match. Yeah. Uh, and it's a three-point question was, what Spielberg film stars Terry Garr, Melinda Dillon, and Bob Balaban? Right, that one's hard. That I've, We just watched a, a thing last night on on Spielberg. Yeah. Or the night, sorry, the night before the match, we watched like some Spiel, a Spielberg documentary on HBO Max. I've seen Close Encounters. I don't remember Bob Balaban being in it, and those two other names wouldn't have sounded familiar. Yeah, they're like supporting actors, actresses. Yeah, I don't think I would have gotten that, honestly. Yeah. So he knew it. He knew Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Where's Bob Bellahan in Close Encounters? Maybe he's a scientist? Maybe. Mm. And yeah, so he answers Close Encounters of the Third Kind. He takes you know his time answering it, which causes Kaiser to jump in for a challenge. Uh, and you can see on your face, as soon as Kaiser jumps into challenge, you just like sink back into your couch. <laughs> you just like fall backwards. I'm not a huge fan of challenges. And plus, like, Kaiser took a really long time to make that challenge. I think the reason they allowed it to be kept is because he might have been trying to say it in the comments, and they just didn't get to they, it. They didn't. So like, people were a couple people said like you know it was like a really late challenge, but uh, Kaiser did try to challenge it like as it was happening. Right. So and then in that case scenario, you have to kind of give it to them because yeah, like, again, just that, because that, they started asking. And that's just them. you know again that's digital that's the digital era guys like you know it's a little bit of human error like we need to like, accommodate for it. it happens. I do. Do I think that like you know if it was another category, I might have had like some issue with the idea that there was a category and then like a break. For me to think about things before the question was asked but like honestly like 
if you think that I had enough time to think about the 80s, the entirety of the 1980s, yeah, and what kind of questions could have been asked about yeah, that. Like, yeah, yeah, it, it would be more reasonable if it was like a narrow slice, like, you know, like in Scorsese. Like, you start, like, running through your head in your mind, okay, Scorsese, it was this year, that year, like, this movie, that movie. Like, you start doing, like, you know, like, kind of recitals in your head to kind of, like, just brush up really quick. But 80s, it's like, what do you think about? Like, Yeah, what, like, am, what am I thinking about the 1980s? I'm just thinking, what year did Stand By Me come out? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Now... I mean, that being said, yeah, so, like, I didn't I didn't love the challenge, but I see why he did it. And he did it because I needed, like, to calm down. Yeah. I think. Like, he wanted me to be, like, like yeah, I think- Kaiser's very aware and tuned in about my emotional state. And he probably knew that I had answered those round two questions. Uh, and I had checked him multiple a little too quickly because I was getting frustrated. Yeah, and this would have been, I think, the, if we still had it, we, uh, we, this would have been the uh, moment to use a timeout. Mm-hmm. If we still had that rule like impl- implemented, but mm-hmm. for digital, it just didn't really make sense. That's why it's not there. Uh, so using a challenge as like a beat, you know, to give yourself like a breather is like, a, you know, a decent strategy just to give you some time to like kind of collect yourself. I, it also works to throw the other person off their game. Although with Griffin, I don't think that's really going to work. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it was like to give me a beat and yeah. I appreciate him doing that. So that's that's uh, that's sweet. Of yeah. And then you get to your five pointer, which was uh, oh, in the a realm very, very, of the 1980s. I was like, can we get three worst categories? A very serendipitous question, though, uh, for you. Oh, my God. That <laughs> question. Guys. First of all, I, I read in the comments that went during this match that Griffin Newman has just done an entire blank check podcast episode about running scared. So he probably yeah. was like like scoffing to himself about that yes yeah, so, i asked for the repeat but guess what i also just did a podcast yeah. episode yeah. with kaiser about the movie running scared yeah <laughs> um, we did a cinema bias episode a whole one just based on the movie running Scared. i remember watching it and being like they're never going to ask about this kind of movie again just like a movie with billy crystal and like uh gregory hines and it's it's weird it's it's got like sort of a january man sort of like weird tonality yeah, to yeah. it. yeah i was thinking about that too it is like january man it is a cop procedural film that is done up like a comedy but like it's about pretty serious subject matter uh, and then at the end turns into like a big caper film like it's like silly that third act wasn't my favorite movie i've ever seen didn't love it but i definitely remembered the name of it um <laughs> And when I'm asking for that JT, because I'm trying to do like a sneaky Ben Bateman thing, yeah. you can see on my face once yeah. they ask the question. As you soon can as see. as soon as they ask, like you're, I, I'm gonna probably show you the video right here. Like as soon as they say Gregory Hines plays detective, detective I think once they get to Detective Ray Hughes, like you realize what it is, and you can see like your little like smirk on your face. I'm like pulling it up right here so we can see. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at my it's, face, yeah. so it's like det- it's Gregory Hines, and I'm like, uh, plays a detective. Gregory Hines, and you're just like, yeah, yeah. they're getting halfway through the question, and yeah. my face just yeah. breaks down to yeah. a little, a little smirk. A little smirk, a little like little grin. And then uh, it says in what nineteen eighty six action comedy, um, and yeah, so you knew it right away. You were just like, "Give me." But however, you did say that you uh, in your repeat trying to play I out the screwed, clock. I screwed myself. Yeah, <laughs> I almost screwed myself, guys. I uh, only play the Ben Bateman game if you are Ben Bateman or is as confident as Ben Bateman is. Because halfway <laughs> through that question of the repeat, I'm sitting there. I think you can probably watch my face fall a little bit as I go, or is it Silver Streak? Yeah. Um, and then I start going, oh, no. <laughs> like, not like which movie was it that had Gregory Hines, because I it's just like, what was the title of that movie? Yeah. And I was like, no, no, no. Come on, Drew. You know this. It's running scared. It's the first thing that pops in your head. You remember? Because the title has nothing to do with the movie. They're not running scared at any point in that movie. They're they're running. I mean, that running is a part of it. Joey Pantalones, the guy who either looks like Benjamin Bratt or possibly is Benjamin Bratt. I can't remember uh, the whole the whole thing. So I'd seen it. So, but I almost like screwed myself out of it and almost went with Silver Streak. In which case, I would have been so angry <laughs> <laughs> if I had lost that question because I asked for a JTE just to mess around yeah. and then just it's had like forgotten out, it. Yeah. So when I hear that five, I feel like people are going to take that away from the game. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, like, and you again, like the round two wasn't what you wanted, and like that sucks. Like sure, but like, you had a perfect round one and the bonus, and you had a perfect round three. And like, it's hard to think of a way that I win, and don't just tie and go into sudden death. Yeah, because I would have had to get three more points just to beat him. Yeah, you you would have had enough wiggle room to go down to multiple choice once, and then beat and then him. and then the, to beat him straight out. Yeah. Otherwise, if I go down multiple choice twice, you know, and again with a good marriage being what it is. In terms of a question that like of a movie that isn't that wasn't released wide, I I can't see myself ever. I, I might have gotten the novella part and gotten that extra point. Yeah. 
but I don't see myself ever being able to get it on the two pointer. Clancy yeah. Brown, I might have been able to get. I definitely Not... would have been able to pull Clancy Brown, but Lawrence Kasdan, no, no, never would have been able to pull without the yeah. two, with the multiple. So yeah, I could have beaten him if I had took my time with Clancy and just calmed my brain down, or if I hadn't been so tripped up from the other questions. Yeah, and this this really it just boils down to like if you had just been lucky on maybe a different wheel slice, like maybe they would have played out differently. But yeah, but like I really wanted King. Like he yeah. was the one that I wanted. And it, by the way, if with those two things with uh, Pet Cemetery, I mean with the ones that I'd gotten, the ones I just mentioned, I still would have like tied. Like yeah. it would, we've just yeah. gone into sudden death. In which case, he probably would have won. Because, That's what I mean. Like, yeah. like the only really way to like have won would be like to have uh, luckily gotten a different slice. And like hopefully those questions would have been different questions. In yeah. Wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. the questions were what they were. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Gone down the multiple choice and then had correctly guessed it. So I would have had to just basically did what he did. But like having gotten the bonus, I could have just won straight out by doing as good as he did in round two and three. Yeah. Yeah. And I did in round three. It's just round two was but only having missed one question in round two and him missing the steal. So like that's to be clear, he I don't think he would have been able to answer my questions either. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I, we talked after the match, and he like, well, first of all, we clearly didn't know a good marriage because he had the uh, advin- uh, the advantage of having the same question with one less multiple choice option in the mix, and he still wasn't able to get it. So like, yeah, no, yeah. he couldn't have gotten that question just right. straight off. He would have if he had gotten that question, he would have gotten a multiple choice and gotten it wrong. Yeah. So that's that. Um, would he have gotten Lauren Kazan? Maybe he might have gotten Lauren Kazan. Maybe I he think might have. Uh, I could see him getting that it just in terms of. The breadth of knowledge he has. Pet Cemetery again, with the music. I don't know how good he is in on it. He's a little bit younger than me. Might not have been able to get it. And the Clancy Brown, I think he probably would have been able to pull. So really, I know that he would have had a check down to one and missed it, which is not something he did in his round. So already we're talking about a situation that's like flipped. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so if he had, you know, the same kind of luck, then like it would have played out the way it played out. He'd um, gotten Stephen King. Yeah, he would have gotten one wrong at least. Yeah. And then... Uh, with his five pointer, uh, which was uh, funny, you know, bringing back David Kep from your multiple choice, it was David Kep directed, uh, sorry, wrote and directed what 1999 ghostly thriller that stars Kevin Bacon. Annoying to me because I know this one immediately, and I think it's giving a lot of context clues to say ghostly because yeah. maybe he would have gone with Hollow Man if if he had if the word ghostly wasn't in there. I have a feeling he knows who David Kemp is and he's able to pull it that way. Like, that's why yeah. I think maybe he also would have gotten the Lawrence Kasdan thing just by process of elimination. Or maybe yeah. K- Kemp would have thrown him off. But, like, yeah. uh, I don't know David Kemp's work that filmography that well. But Ghostly, I mean, Kevin Bacon in that period of time has only done three horror movies. It's Stir of Echoes. It's Hollow Man, which isn't about a ghost. Yeah. And it's uh, Flatliners, which I don't know if it is about a ghost or there's a demon that comes back. There's like ghostly apparitions in it, but I don't know if there's like an actual ghost. Yeah, so Stir of Echoes to me is the only movie it could possibly be. And like having just watched Brendan in Collision, uh, like when Brendan was over watching Collision with us and he gets that uh, What Lies Beneath question, I remember turning to him and going, you know, if this had been about who plays the best friend in Stir of Echoes, I could have told you like, you know... (laughs) I'm trying to snap. Like, I could have told you like that. Oh, it's Olympia Dukakis. Like, yeah. I could have just... I uh, I think that's her name. Yeah. So I would have been able... Maybe that's the wrong person's name, and I will forever be angry at myself for getting that wrong. But uh, <laughs> looking it up right now. Stervecos. Stervecos cast. Cast list. If it's not Olympia Dukakis, it's that person's name who sounds like Olympia Dukakis. Elena Douglas. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. So I would have said the wrong name, but it was Elena Douglas. She's got that, like, those big eyes. She was on a bunch of things. Yeah. Anyway. Well, good Damn. thing they didn't give you that one. Damn it. <laughs> uh, but I, I was thinking of the right person. I just had the name wrong. Yeah. So uh, the one who dated Martin Scorsese. Yes. Um, Stir of Echoes has a very famous scene in it in which Elena Douglas. <laughs> it's so funny that I would have gotten that wrong. So I was so proud of myself too when I told Brendan that. So uh, Elena Douglas puts uh, Kevin Bacon into a trance, and it's very Lynchian. It's all like red. She's like, "You're in a theater, and you see like something like that, like lights come up, and he's just like in a theater, and she's like, the room is red, and so the room gets like turned red, and then she's like, you you see some words on a screen, and suddenly the movie theater's projection lights come up. It's a very creepy sequence." Like, it's really good. Like, yeah. that one sequence in Stir of Echoes, like, is enough to have sold me on the whole movie. Right. It was also a big year for, like, horror movies or for, for ghost movies because it's the same year as The Sixth Sense. It's, like, the same year as, like, a bunch of huge movies that hit the theaters. 1999, I think, is the greatest year probably that I've been alive for movies, some total. Mm-hmm. Like, it was the year that American Beauty, and it was the right, year right. that was, it was, it was, at least in terms of, like, critically acclaimed movies. Yes. Stir of Echoes 
for some reason is always going to stick in my mind is having come out that year. <laughs> yeah. Star Trek um, definitely up there with the pantheon of great pantheon films. pantheon of great movies. No, yeah. but it had like a great sequence. And famously, kind of like how I always remember the movie Fallen with uh, John Goodman and Denzel Washington, that yeah. movie, because it's the first time I heard the song Time is on my side. Yeah. Time because yeah. like, that's what the killer They're iconic becomes. iconic almost like like my little calendar girl yeah it's <laughs> almost like my like being able to guess the killer by going yeah that movie for five minutes straight. for five minutes straight <laughs> and that kevin klein movie calendar girl no january man <laughs> a movie in which the killer it kills by month so he's not even the january man i yeah. could go on all day folks but yeah. um a calendar girl might have actually been a better title calendar girl would have been a great title yeah. maybe they couldn't get the rights no yeah. they got the rights to the song yeah <laughs> okay so uh so Star Trek was used painted black and it was yeah. the first time i had ever heard painted black this is all to say these questions are easy if you know, like the if you if they are easy because of your subjective experience, I'm not saying that Stir of Echoes would have been the front of anyone's mind, or that he got easier questions with the with the one from uh, Eternal Sunshine or the Hot Fuzz. Those questions are objectively, legitimately hard. Maybe not as hard as the Stephen King questions, but they are legitimately, if you aren't me, yeah. hard questions. Yeah, and it's like they were in the wheelhouse, and it sucks you didn't get them. Uh, it yeah. sucks I didn't get those questions. Yeah. 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 And, uh, but, you know, with that, he was able to uh, pull his five, the Star of Echoes question, and uh, get a score of 25 to 22. Again, like, no, nothing to scuff at. Like, you, uh, your li- higher scores, I think. Yeah, we're, I think that might be your highest scoring game. Like, that's really, true. Really, I think that, that that might be true because last time, what against Riley? I got like a what, 11? I, I think you got, I think you got 19 against Jen. And that was, uh, because I didn't uh, go to my five, right? Yeah, you only had to answer you two. I feel like it was lower. I thought it was 19. Pretty sure it was 19. Okay. Yeah. Is and that how hard you get if you get all the questions right and go to multiple ones? No, well, he got 25. So. No, I'm saying, that, but like I got all my questions right and went to multiple ones with Jen. So I'm yeah. saying, is that the number that would add up? I think so. Like, yeah. So both so 19, nine, not an even number. Yeah. Nine plus two is uh, 11 plus two more is uh, 14. I said 13 plus one is This is like 14, clue. <laughs> this 16, is plus two plus 16, one. 16. And then you hit your two points. So 18. Maybe you got 18 points. 18 points. Maybe. No, 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 but you got steal. So ah, yeah, yeah. 19, but still, that's weird because you ended on an odd number. You would think that's only happens if you check the multiple once and then don't get a steal. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that seems like a very high number even for that match because I didn't play all the way through. Dewberry, I didn't have to answer my five, so that takes yeah. some points away. And mm-hmm. I, that game was a little bit sloppy. Like, not neither of us got perfect games on that. Yeah, yeah. Marisol went perfect in round one. Went to yeah. uh, went to multiple choice twice in round two. Maybe round two is where I'm like where I need to shore up then because like yeah that was a category again I knew very well the SNL movies yeah. and like I had to go to multiple ones and got it and had to go to multiple ones and get, like possibly give up a steal although both times the person wasn't able to get the steal which shows me that the question is that hard yeah and luckily like you uh, you're improving every time and like round three I think is like is the more important more important round to uh nail obviously because I, I can make or break you like if you have a bad round two you can come back with a good round three mm-hmm. and so round two even though you kind of like had your stumbles in like this match and the last match those are the that's the the natural round that you can refine like just by general studying mm-hmm. you know like you can like pick that slice that is available to you guys as competitors be like okay i want to study like this thing this thing this thing like you can like shore up your game like pretty easily just that way over time mm-hmm. you know as of course as opposed to round three like that's the the wild card you know yeah it's true it's true it's like it's it's also the big takeaway too like people yeah. are going to remember you playing a good game if you're able to like hit all your round three because yeah. it looks like it's just like magic you yeah know? yeah because <laughs> it is it's magic like it's like we're we're getting questions there's no people are like oh you need to study better for round three how yeah i need to study what like number correlations like i'm not i'm not kevin klein and calendar man <laughs> or january man i can't just arbitrarily guess like the the random pattern that like numbers are going to be correlated and assigned to categories and then i can't do a study session for like 80s movies yeah you either know it or you don't you do yeah yeah and uh i think i just it's annoying because i knew all of his questions and let me be clear i did not think that i was going to come away the winner of this game i think that uh i thought i mean my thought process was you know besides marisol it's hard to think of another competitor who it's like this person, even though we've only seen him play a little, having known his work outside of the Schmodown, uh, there's very little this person does not know. Yeah. Like, he knows animated, he knows uh, rom-coms, he knows, you know, Sam Neill apparently starting the Omen 3. My God, when he got that, I was like, are you kidding? Like, that's, <laughs> oh no, like, I'm screwed. Yeah. The only thing I feel like he doesn't really know that well is release dates, in which case, go nuts, guys. Yeah. Go, go nuts, fam. Good luck, um, Yeah. 
go nuts, fam, and try to pick release dates, which we've seen people who even do great in release dates like stumble all the time. Yep. Yeah, it can happen. And uh, so now we do know that he will be going to New York to play uh, Josh Horowitz. Or actually, he will be staying in New York to play Josh Horowitz, yep. <laughs> uh, yep. who both live there, which I said in the comments, like, good, that saves us some money. Yep, that saves <laughs> so, some money. Probably yeah. some probably airfare. Happened. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so that yeah, he'll be playing in New York as the undercard against uh, the winner of uh, Marisol and Ethan Irwin uh, against uh, the number one contender match mm-hmm. for that one. And uh, yeah, so. It'll be a big show, a big show in New York. So uh, congrats to those two and who everyone is going to be out there. Um, I think you're still going to try and make it out there to New York. Yeah, I'm still going to try and make it out there. Uh, yeah. I like both of those guys a lot. They're both, you know, great. Yeah, I um, I mean, I'll see if I can join you. It'll be really dependent you on... You have not s- ever taken a plane flight, yeah, I have so not, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I talked about this uh, last night on the What the Show podcast. Really? I've never flown on a plane, yeah. So... Uh, maybe you'll make it out there. I'm, I'm hoping to. It might not happen. Um, I... I it's generally going to depend on a couple things. Delta variant, more variants, yeah. uh, whether it's safe to go on a plane, whether I have any place to stay. I, yeah. Well, uh, now, now New York and Los Angeles are have issued the mandates that you have to show proof of vaccination for like indoor activities and okay. uh, for events and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, we shouldn't be having uh, whatever. That's a totally different thing. I'm <laughs> just saying that like I'm I played my heart out this game. I was. Very, very happy after round one to be in the lead. I was surprised to be in the lead and I was hoping to hang on to that. But I'm, you know, as, as round three went on, you know, and I pulled that three, I just, I got, or that five rather, I got very proud of myself. I was really proud of the way that I played that first round and that third round. And I don't think I have anything to like, you know, worry about or fix compared to like my previous round threes. Like that was a sign that I do know arbitrary random information if it just comes to me <laughs> all right <laughs> uh but yeah and it's also a good sign that cinema bias is paying off in mm-hmm. some way cinema bias is paying off yeah <laughs> gosh i hope alex mack watched that episode and just go with, oh my god <laughs> you know yeah um right. so yeah i think that's that's about it that's um, that's the match that is your match that's, today. that's, that's what um, we did today we yeah. decided to release this as a podcast because people seem to be liking the idea of the podcast. Uh, we don't know exactly. We didn't have a, a quiz that we could do today, so we decided to do this as like a little bonus. Yeah, just put it out for everyone to listen to. And, you know, we'll, we might do this every so often. We're not going to review every Schmodown match, but something no. that you're involved in or maybe your teammate's involved in or someone that, you know, would really like or like a special event, stuff like that we might talk about and put it out there. Yeah, put it out there in the universe. But uh, this one is just like a one-off. Let's oh sorry. Let's talk about why Drew did the way she did and what what her thought process was. And I'm sorry, I kicked you in the little snout. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, I kicked you in the snout. And just like that, folks, I think this is an end of another episode of whatever. Yeah. Uh, the showdown. What? Drew, I came up with the idea. The showdown drew down. The video chronicles. <laughs> the video chronicles. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Okay. See you guys All later. Right. Bye. See ya. Bye.